have edentulous area um, in teeth number four and five. Now we go to the patient, and what we're going to use is a really great tool if you haven't seen it. It's called a Vibroject, and what it does, it's a little instrument that will actually attach to your existing syringes, and it will vibrate, which gives a motor sensation, which is different than the pain receptors uh, sensation when we're injecting. So I find this to be an excellent tool to get a positive response from your patient, um, basically a pain-free uh, injection in our surgical site. You can see here that I'm infiltrating. Uh, I'm not really blocking the entire area. I infiltrated the, into the vestibule and I'm walking up the edentulous space onto the palatal surface. Now I'm a big believer if we're going to do this, let's get intense anesthesia of the soft tissue. Remember bone is not innervated. Bone has no pain receptors in it. Nerves run through bone but not in this area. So we just want complete anesthesia of the soft tissue. Another great tool, another wonderful tool that I use to make my implant surgery a little easier for me is something called the MD Guide. And we purchased these MD Guide, mesial distal guide, from Golden Dental Solutions uh, here in the Detroit area. And it comes in a kit, and you can see it has a pilot drill at the end. And it has cylinder, um, um, round cylinder, which duplicates the width, the mesial distal width of the tooth you want to replace. One thing that's very important is be able to virtually place the implant before you ever touch the patient and to imagine what the teeth are going to look like prior to surgical placement. I find this to be an excellent, excellent tool to help me in determining proper placement. Oftentimes when we're doing this uh, implant surgery, we have a tendency, if we're freehanding it, to maybe put the implant too close to the tooth. Now remember also that we have to have a minimum of two millimeters between the outside of an implant and the outside of the root structure of a tooth. In between implants, we want a minimum of three millimeters. Those are minimums. So we have a space and we have a, kind of have to determine what size teeth we're going to be able to put in this situation. We then have the same size cylinder post that will engage into that preparation and I tie some floss around it so we don't lose it and you can see, you can start to virtually see what that tooth is going to look like uh, prior to um, really moving any further. So you're able to position the, the, the patient and the, imp, the teeth correctly. Then we're going to do the same thing with the second tooth, uh, splitting the difference. And we're using the pilot drill, and then uh, we'll set the, the uh, cylinder in place, and we'll make sure that we're happy with our positioning. Minimum of two millimeters from adjacent teeth, and three millimeters from adjacent implants. So you can see here how the final crowns will really be positioned uh, correctly in, in that edentulous ridge. And we look like we're in really, really good position. We will... And we have a flapless, fairly uh, atraumatic surgery for our patients. Uh, Post-operatively, we will give them um, ibuprofen. We will give them an antibiotic regimen, and uh, we will have them use ice to the outside of their face.